guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I thought I'd do a video all about my favourite souvenirs from the places that I've been around the world. Um, I know if you read backpacking vlogs, there's a lot about like minimalism and it's all about experiences over things and I completely agree, when you're travelling you should be prioritising experiences. You can only, you know, in most cases you're only going to go to these places once, you might not be back, it's most important to save your time and your money for experiences. But at the same time, I really like having little souvenirs from the places that I've been to. I really like having things in my house and in my space that remind me of my travels, that make me happy, especially if those souvenirs are kind of, they come about as a result of an experience. So some of these kind of have stories behind them, the ones that I'm going to show you today. Um, and yeah, so I don't see these videos often. Um, I don't really see them at all, so I thought, why not have a go at making one myself? So let's get into it. Uh, so I've kind of got them all around me, so I'll be leaning in and out of frame. First one is um, this beautiful lacquerware from Myanmar, um, which I visited last year. I bought um, this pot and then two really small bowls, um, which have these beautiful details on them and I bought them from hopefully you can see the uh, golden cuckoo workshop in Bagan in Myanmar um, and yeah so they've got the little little bird on the bottom there anyway so um, these are really special to me because um, you can go around the workshop and um, I'll insert a clip here of um, me in the workshop and you can see uh, how they're made and it was um, a really, like, I mean as I said, I said it was, sometimes it's nice to have souvenirs that are a memento of an experience and that was a really special experience for me to see the workshop and I was the only person there, it was in the off season um, and I think it's really important to support local craftspeople um, if you're going to buy things when you're abroad and that's what I try to do, I try to, rather than, you know, shops or, or kind of manufactured stuff or imported stuff. I try and support local craftspeople. Um, and I just thought that these were beautiful. I mean, the details on here are just insane. My camera really doesn't want to focus. Um, yeah, um, it was so hard to choose. I was with my 40-litre uh, backpack and 15-litre day bag, so I couldn't bring too much with me um, but yeah that was a really special item for me. So these are going to be in like a completely random order, I've kind of just had them piled up around me so we'll probably be swapping from country and back to country um, but the next one that I've got here is this frame, hi, <laughs> uh, this frame from India, is it going to focus, there we go, um, so this is like a uh, I hate the word vintage, but I'm going to say vintage. Vintage frame that I found at a um, on a stall just outside. I think it was Jaisalmere, yeah, Jaisalmere Fort. Um, and as you can see, it's like really aged, um, you know, quite cracked. The painting is really worn away, but I really like that. I think it adds more character. I think it's more interesting. Um, and yeah, sorry, I'm like looking in the viewfinder to make sure that it's in focus. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think this is a really, really beautiful frame. Um, it doesn't have a back, as you can see, um, so I'll have to make one. But um, yeah, I, I'm really pleased with that one. I think I managed to negotiate it down to something like two pounds, which I think is insane. It's such a beautiful frame for only two pounds. So yeah. Next up, I've got this stunning mirror that I got in um, Marrakesh, so as you can see, I'll just open it a little bit there, oh, you can see my door. <laughs> um, this beautiful mirror from Marrakesh, it's got a little hook on the back, which is probably just a tiny hook that you can hang up. Um, yeah, I, the souks of Marrakesh were probably my first like, non-Western travel experience, and I absolutely love them. I think that's kind of what got me hooked on travelling. Um, and it was really, this was just really magical. It was like my first experience of bargaining and wandering around. And yeah, this, so this is really, really special to me. I think it's really, really beautiful as well. You can kind of probably see behind me, I've got like my travel shelves. So there's a lot of stuff sort of floating around. Is this little guy who is oh, also from Myanmar and is super delicate. I'll put a close up in here because he's like quite difficult but basically he's a tiny little fisherman I think he's adorable I was so worried he was gonna get smashed 
um, during the trip home. Uh, the woman who sold it to me like wrapped him up in loads of tissue paper. There was like a box you could buy, but I was like, I don't need to buy a box to put him in. Um, and he survived, so it was fine. Um, but yeah, I, I love him and I think he's great. Um, and I put him next to my next item, which is this tiny little batik tortoise who is adorable. Um, he's got really detailed painting on his shell. Again, I'll put a little close up in. Um, and I put them together and I, because I'm really basic, I think it's hilarious that like, oh, look, he's going for the fish. Ah. <laughs> um, but yeah, okay, we'll put him back there. Um, okay, so my next item will show you, going back to the kind of like, experiences being the most important um is my dive vlog yay so while i was in malaysia i learned to dive um and that has kind of you know without being exaggeratory like it's completely changed my life it's um something that i prioritize when i go away experiencing the underwater world is just incredible um and when i went when the a dive shop that I qualified at, Quiver, gave me this dive vlog, this personalised dive vlog. So um, if you don't dive, whenever you go diving, like um, it's recommended that you kind of track your dives and each dive shop has like its own little stamp. Um, the two that I have been at abroad, because I only qualified last year, um, also sold t-shirts. So I'm hoping that everywhere I go, I can buy like a t-shirt as well to, to remind me of the dive that I had. But at the very least, I've got my dive log and I'll make sure that that is always stamped whenever I go diving. Uh, so next up, I've got this painting, which was, I believe, 20 euros in Seville. So, um, I mean, it's not the most beautiful painting. It's not, you know, Picasso, but I really love it. I think the colours are really evocative and I think the the scene is just really beautiful. Um, this was the first holiday I took after my boyfriend and I split up. I kind of booked an impromptu trip to Seville, um, you know, like, oh, single lady, confidence, explore the world again. Um, and yeah, I think it just reminds me of, you know, that self-confidence and, um, yeah, it was just really cool going into this little antique shop and finding this painting and buying it. So yeah, um, I, I really like that and it means a lot to me. Next up is another thing from Myanmar, which are these bells. Um, so, oh, there's like <laughs> a little bit of dust on them. Um, so bells are really important in temples in Myanmar. Um, and these were, I got these at the first temple I visited on my own, e-biking around, which again was an amazing experience. I'll put a little cutaway in here. Um, and I just think these are beautiful. Um, they've got these gorgeous, again, it's not gonna focus. I'll put in a little close up, here we go. Gorgeous details of the leaves and the like engraving on the bell. Um, and you can kind of see here, there's a little bit on there. Um, and yeah, I just think they're really beautiful. It was the one thing I knew I wanted to get when I went to Myanmar. To Myanmar were some bells, just because, um, yeah, they have a special significance in the culture. Um, and I thought it would just be really lovely and kind of peaceful to have them in my house. Um, so yeah. So next up is this shield uh, from Borneo. Uh, so when you visit Kuching, which is where I went to, I. I didn't have much time in Borneo, I really want to go back, so this is only speaking about Kuching. Um, but when you visit Kuching, there will be shields everywhere, and they are super touristy. Um, they all kind of follow the same pattern. I actually bought a mini one before I found this, which is up here. Um, so yeah, they're kind of, there are quite a lot of these little tiny ones around. Um, they've all got like barcode stickers on the back, and they're obviously made for tourism. Um, I really liked the idea of having a traditional shield, um, if, if I could. Um, obviously, you know, they're a popular thing or they wouldn't be making these ones, but I couldn't find any kind of authentic ones, so I caved and I bought this sort of teeny tiny one, and I was like, okay, it was pound fifty. you know, I've got a like blah and then on my last day I found this tiny little antique shop um, and it had loads of stuff like gigantic huge <laughs> um carvings and all sorts um but then sort of it was you know your kind of traditional story stuffed inside an ancient pot covered in a layer of dust was this shield and I ummed and art over it because it was quite expensive um I think it was about 15 pounds which I mean in the grand scale of things that's not that expensive but you know, 
like uh, experiences over things. I was trying to save my money for uh, dolphin tours and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I spoke to the owner and he said this was made in probably the 1980s. Um, so, you know, it's not ancient, you know, from years and years ago, but it's not mass produced kind of, you know, for the tourists. And I just think it's really interesting. Hopefully it's gonna focus. Here we go. So yeah, I think it's really beautiful. Um, I'm so glad I found it. It's a lot more, um, I hate the word authentic, but it just feels more authentic. It's got this little um, string, so I hang it up on my wall. And yeah, I'm, I'm really, really pleased that I found that. Okay, we're back. Sorry, my camera went a bit funny there. So okay, I think we're back, cool. Um, so next up is, um, this stunning, which way around shall I show it? I'll do it both ways. Stunning cushion cover from Lao. Oh, is it gonna focus? Yeah. Um, so this is from a shop called Ock ok Pop Top. Gorgeous detail on both sides. Um, which has they have a few a few kind of branches in Lao. Um and yeah, they are fair trade, cooperative, helping especially women get back into work, and they produce the most stunning textiles. I have a massive problem with textiles. Uh, I buy too much fabric when I'm away. Um, uh, yeah, like small textiles are my weakness. Um, I really love them. I love the texture they can add to a room and it is, as I said before, a way of supporting local craftsmen. Um, textiles are often a traditional you know, part of uh, cultures around the world and you see, you know, that that's how you can support local communities is buying those textiles. Um, and this cushion cover I just thought was absolutely stunning. The colours are insane, the detail in the weaving, if it will focus, is just beautiful. Just really gorgeous. Um, it was so hard to choose in the shop. I bought a little scarf as well. They are just absolutely beautiful. Um, I really recommend if you're going to Lao, uh, checking out Ok Pop Top because it's a way to support the local people and also, you know, get these beautiful, beautiful pieces of fabric. Okay, so next up is um, another kind of fabric art piece from Indonesia. It comes in this cute little bag. Um, so while I was in Indonesia, I was really keen to get some batik. Uh, batik is a traditional, um, how would you say it, like dyeing craft process in Indonesia and Malaysia. There's like a debate about who invented it. Um, and in Indonesia, I visited some workshops um, and I really, really, really wanted to buy a piece of batik art. And I found this. Is it gonna all fit in, hopefully? So yeah, um, I really like this. I love the colors of the design. I think um, the detail, hopefully this will focus. Um, so yeah, the, the detail is just gorgeous. There are so many different colors in, in the design. I thought it was a really unique um, piece of art to have in, in my life and in my room and again supporting local crafts processes is something that I'm really passionate about um, and yeah so that's that one. So while I was in Malaysia in Kuala Lumpur I visited one of the big malls which I've completely forgotten the name of I'll insert a little name here um, and it's this huge mall which has loads of different like Little India, Little China, all of those places and obviously they get real crafts from the neighbouring countries and, and have them in this mall and um, while in Little India I found this beautiful uh, again piece of fabric can you tell I have a problem um, which is from I believe Kashmir um, and I just I mean you know it's essentially a table runner I'm gonna run out of space. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's really, really long, really beautiful, um, gorgeous table table runner technically, but um, the the quality of the stitching on here is is nuts. Um, I would never put food on this. <laughs> um, it's so beautiful. Um, my plan is to put um, to put this. Oh, <laughs> to put. So my plan is to put this over the back of a chair. Um, it's so soft. I cannot get over 
how unbelievably soft it is. So yeah, I would never put food on this. Um, and again, I ummed and ahed over it. It was about £25, which is quite expensive. But for the level of craftsmanship in this, um, uh, yeah, it's one of my favourite things and I love it and I love the colours. <sighs> okay, so this was a nightmare to get back. <laughs> Uh, while I was in Jaisalmer, I visited this shop called Jaisalmer Handloom, which has textiles from all over India um, in this like Aladdin's cave of gorgeous fabric. Once again, I have a problem with fabric, um, and I bought a blanket. Um, it's I'm going to use it as a rug because it's massive and quite thick. Um, and I mean, like I'm holding it up, you're not going to be able to see it. I'll have to put a cutaway in. Um, but yeah, it's this absolutely stunning piece of fabric that is fairly thick um probably can't really see um but it's just it's just really beautiful the the colors are nuts it's just absolutely stunning um and i saw it and my mum and i were just like oh no i have to have this um Again, handmade, hand woven, supporting, um, you know, small independent stores. Um, I was hoping to try and find a rug while I was in India. They are um, really beautifully made in India, really, really um, well crafted. Um, and although this technically isn't a rug, um, I think with some runners on the back, it would be beautiful. It's absolutely massive. <laughs> it's so big. Um, so if I put some runners on, I think it would make a really, really lovely kind of feature for uh, my hopeful future living room. <laughs> okay, uh, so next up we're gonna swivel. <laughs> um, um, so yeah, so this guy is um, a little totem figure that I bought in Borneo. Um, again, from a kind of smaller crafts place, I asked them, um, I asked the shopkeeper about, um, you know, why these are made, and basically these, these figures help protect your home um, and keep you safe. Uh, they had absolutely massive ones, but I was, you know, backpacking, so I bought a really tiny one. Um, and yeah, he just makes me happy, he keeps me safe. Um, and yeah, I really like him. So next up, we have this beautiful ceramic, watch me swivel. <laughs> beautiful ceramic lotus from Cambodia. Um, if it will, there we go. Um, so I purchased this in um, in Siem Reap, um, down one of the tiny little alleyways in the town. If you've been to Siem Reap, or if you go to Siem Reap, you'll, you'll know what I mean. There's a tiny little ceramic studio, and it had beautiful ceramics, like big ones, small ones, lots of things. Um, and I just kind of fell in love with this. It's a gorgeous little lotus leaf um, kind of trinket box. So yeah, it uh, it opens up like that. Um, oh, this is where I get lost without putting it back together. There we go. Um, and I just think it's really, really beautiful. I just think it's um, really stunning. Uh, lotus leaves were something that we kind of ate a lot in Cambodia and they were really tasty. So kind of a random memory, but yeah, I, I really like this and I'm really glad I got it and I'm glad it made back in one piece. We stuffed it with uh, blankets and tissues and all sorts to, to keep it safe but yeah. Oh um, so the second to last thing I've got to get one second. Okay I'm back. Um, so as I said I think one of the most important things that you can do while you're traveling is invest in experiences rather than things even though this video is kind of about things. Um, some of the most special ones to me are these things that have memories. So, you know, the, the Myanmar pots that, you know, were about this craftsman tour that I saw, the dive log, the painting, they've all got a lot of memories around the experience um, attached to me. Um, and so nothing is kind of more summary of that than this cushion. <laughs> <laughs> um, which, uh, so this cushion, which I actually made myself. Um, I did a batik making class in Malaysia, in Kuala Lumpur, with Batik Boutique, who again, I highly recommend. They employ women um, to run the courses, to make the items that they sell. Um, and I had this incredible class, one-on-one -on -one class, it took about an hour and a half, um, making my own cushion. Um, so yeah, it's kind of, I mean, you know, you can kind of tell that it's handmade. <laughs> um, so I used a stamp for these beautiful bits, the bits that look good, uh, was a stamp. And then I kind of hand drew on um, these sort of, um, 
I don't want to say fleur de lis because that's kind of an insult to the French, um, but these sort of handmade little glue bits um, down at the bottom here. Um, it was an attempt at me putting Anna A T uh, my initials, <laughs> but it didn't really it didn't really come out. Um, but yeah, this cushion means a lot to me because um, again, it's an experience rather than a thing um, that ended up in a thing that I can have in my space. And whenever I look at it, it makes me really happy. And then finally, last but not least, is actually um, this necklace. Um, so I try and buy. Um, I try. I was going to say I try and buy a piece of jewellery wherever I go. <laughs> That's not true. If I see a piece of jewellery that I like uh, while I'm travelling and it's not, you know, some kind of extortionate thing, I will buy it because I wear I wear quite a lot of jewellery. I wear jewellery on a day to day basis, um, and so having jewellery that reminds me of my travels is really meaningful to me rather than just you know something that I picked up in a chain store. Um, and I got this at A M Sailies in Colombo. It's a tiny little silver and sapphire necklace, uh, which, you know, makes it sound like, oh my gosh, that must have been extortionate. It's actually £20 for uh, 9.25 sterling silver and a tiny little cornflower blue sapphire. Um, sapphires are what Sri Lanka are famous for, I think, in terms of gemstones. Um, and yeah, so this, this kind of meant a lot to me. I, I wear it a lot. Um, I'm usually a kind of gold-toned jewellery girl, but... Um, I make an exception for this because I think it's really beautiful, it's really unique and again it has a story behind it, um, so yeah. So that's uh, it for this video, let me know if you liked it um, and I could make another one. Um, this is by no means an exhaustive list of my souvenirs and where I've been. As I say I've got a bit of a fabric problem, <laughs> uh, so I have some more pieces of fabric if you're interested in fabric like me, I can do a video showing the different fabrics from different parts of the world. Um, and yeah, um, if you're interested let me know because I can make another one. Um, so thanks guys, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye. Thanks guys, don't forget to check out some of my other videos and subscribe coming up next vlogs of India and what I pack in my backpack. <laughs>